really quickly again, how many Giants fans are out there? <laughs> All right, excellent. excellent. Hey, just to be fair, just to be fair, I know we live in a, we live in a two-team state, so uh, how many Jets fans? <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm being mean, I'm being mean, but uh, you know, all in. Still can't really believe it happened. <laughs> Cause see, I was this close to saying no. See, I'll never forget the night I get the call before Christmas Eve. Mr. Gonzalez, will you please, please speak to the New York Giants? And uh, I honestly thought it was a joke. I thought it was a prank. Cause you, know, you wanna know what my full-time job is? I'm a ninth grade world history teacher. I'm not a professional football player. So when they called me up, I thought, what could I possibly tell Eli Manning? Why would Victor Cruz listen to me for one second? Am I gonna educate him on the Renaissance? <laughs> Julius Caesar? But I did say yes. And I'll never forget walking into, walking into the team room, and I remember as I walked into the team room, I'm already nervous, but as I walk into the team room, one of the first guys to shake my hand, he was on the team at the time, his name was Chris Canty. Now just so you know, Chris Canty is almost about 6'9", 320 pounds. I have pretty big hands, but I remember when he shook my hand, I felt his fingers go down to here on my arm. <laughs> and then I tried my best for the next 20 minutes. And when I walked out of those doors, if you were standing right by the exit and said, how did you do? You know, you, you must have did great, it's the Giants. I would have told you I failed. I would have told you I blew it. See, once again, I believe the lie that because I didn't have a certain status, what I did really didn't matter. I believe the lie that they were probably just not on their cell phones because you know, they, they weren't allowed, it's a team rule. They probably could care less what I had to say. I'm not important, I'm just a teacher. But see, it's amazing what happens because our words and our actions always have power, whether we realize it or not, whether we have a million views on YouTube or not. And they start winning and they win the next game, and the next game, and I start getting calls from Fox News in New York City to be on this show called Fox and Friends in the morning, and then I get a call from the radio show Boomer and Carton in the morning to be on their radio show and explain all in, and then the ESPN comes down from Connecticut, tapes that whole entire piece, they say, Mr. Gonzalez, if the Giants beat the 49ers in the NFC Championship, we will play that Super Bowl Sunday in front of the world. Well, they play at Super Bowl Sunday. Now, I didn't go to the Super Bowl. I could have, but, you know, I'm a teacher, and so I wanted to make sure I was there for my students on Monday, and if I went to the Super Bowl, I couldn't make it. Also, as a teacher, I was at a sick day, so I couldn't take off anyway. Uh, I'll be honest. But I'll never forget the day after the Giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl, I'm walking to school, and I turn the corner to go into my building, and there is news vans lined up down the block in front of my school. I'm a little nervous, but I keep walking. I'll never forget the principal waited at the door for me, said, Mr. Gonzalez, please follow me. I walk with him into the conference room and I see reporters from CBS, NBC, ABC, even CNN, Espanol is there and I don't even speak Spanish. It was amazing. I did interviews all morning long and the next day I don't walk to school, I run to school. Because I figure if that's the first day, who's gonna interview me today? I'm a little bit of an Oprah fan. I thought she might be there to give me a car or something special. And I was hoping. But I'll never forget, I run to school on Tuesday. I look, it's nobody. That's how fame is, it's just that quick. And as I walk into the office, I said, Mr. Gonzalez, there was a message left for you, they wanted you to call them back, and I call it back and, well, it's to tell me that there's a victory parade in New York City and that I should join them. And as I walk into New York City that day, I start seeing t-shirts. And the first couple of shirts I saw, I thought, well, that's a coincidence. And then I saw some more, and then I saw more, and then I saw a couple of hundred, and before I know it, there were t-shirts all over New York City made by the Giants that had two words on the front. And the two words were all in. And I said, you know what, that's, that's pretty great, and, I went back to my school on Wednesday and I showed my class and first period they loved it, but by third period they could care less and <laughs> freshman. And uh, I remember I put the shirt on my desk and I'll never forget the phone rang and I picked up the phone and a voice said, are you Mr. Gonzalez? And I said, yes. They said the same Mr. Gonzalez that talked to the Giants and they won the Super Bowl. I said, yes, sir. At this point in time, the phone call starts getting very, very aggressive repeating words I would never say up here. And I finally interrupt the caller and say, why are you so angry? Why are you, why are you yelling through the phone? He said, well, I'm the, I'm the head football coach of the high school you work at. You know, you could have told us about all in. We could have won some football games too. <laughs> I said, coach, I had no idea it was even gonna work. He said, well, we start preseason conditioning. I would love for you to talk to my team in a couple of weeks. And as I walked down to the weight room in the beautiful city that I get the pleasure of teaching in Union City, all the guys are wearing a shirt. And as you can imagine, there's two words on every shirt. And, the two words are, are all in. 
And I said, you know what, that's great, and I love helping my students, but I said, it's done. Well, two weeks later, another phone call. Mr. Gonzalez, yes, the same one that talked to the Giants, yes. Would you mind helping our team? I said, yes, but I'm a teacher. They said, don't worry, we'll work it out. Your school will give you two days off. I said, sure, and before I know it, I'm flying out to Chicago. And there's a team in the NBA, and they're called the, uh, the Portland Trailblazers. And they decide they would like to be all in as well, except they haven't won a championship yet, so let's not talk about them anymore. Uh -oh. <laughs> not a magic word. And then I get a call from, from Ireland. And I remember picking up the phone, they said, well, Mr. Gonzalez, we saw that piece, and well, we play football over here, but we play something called Gaelic football. And I didn't know too much about it, but it's an amazing sport they play there. It's just breathtaking, and well, they actually got a chance to win, and this is a Dublin Gaelic football team, and they were all in, and, and then I get a call, and they said, well, Mr. Gonzalez, where, you, where you're from, you play American football, but here we play real football. So it was from London, and it turned out to be a team over there that plays real football, and they're called the Arsenal Soccer Club, and you know, it was an amazing experience. They're actually playing Manchester United right now. I hope they win, but then it gets corporate. Then corporations start calling up like PNC Bank and DSW Shoes and, and Anheuser-Busch and help us, our clients be all in and our, our employees. And I'll never forget, I get the call to go down to Arkansas. And as I go down to Arkansas, I wasn't sure exactly who it might be, but it turns out to be a company. You've probably heard of them too. Their, <laughs> their name is Walmart. And I thought it was just going to be speaking to cashiers or registers or things of that nature, but it's actually their shareholders meeting. And I remember walking to their shareholders meeting very nervous and, you know, it's quite nerve-wracking when you speak right after Damon John or, or the running back Marshall Falk and then next up is Tom Cruise. And once again, you say, I'm just a ninth grade world history teacher, right? But I'd have to say without a doubt, probably one of the biggest honors. It is the biggest honor. A lot of my students, they like to play a video game. Maybe you've seen it, it's become quite popular. It's called Call of Duty. And in the video game, you interact in the life of a soldier, complete different missions. Well, it's one thing to play a video game. It's another thing entirely, getting the honor and the privilege to work with our armed forces. At first, it was a privilege to speak with cadets from the West Point Military Academy and then speak with some of our Air Force. And then this past summer, going down to Fort Dix and getting to work with our United States Army. And honestly, who better to represent being all in than our armed forces, men and women, who are all in for us every single day. And honestly, they always deserve a round of applause for what they do. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Their sacrifice for us. But if I can be honest, some people just don't get it. I had a chance to speak for a corporation not too long ago, and I'll never forget after the talk, an individual came up to me afterwards and they said, Mr. Gonzalez, thank you for speaking. That was pretty good. But I think you're wasting your time. I was a little taken back by the comment. He said, Mr. Gonzalez, please don't take any offense. See, I work in the marketing department for our, our company here. And well, this all in thing, it's a great slogan. You know what a slogan is, right, Mr. Gonzalez? It's, it's, it's like those things after the commercial. It's Nike has a slogan, just do it. McDonald's has a slogan, I'm loving it. It's a great slogan. And, the reason I say you're making a mistake is you still like being a teacher, working with students. No offense, but there's really not a lot of profit in that, is there? I was a little taken back by the comments, so I said, honestly, for me, sir, all in is not a slogan. It's a lifestyle. It's something I try to live out every single day. He said, well, that's nice, but I'm just telling you what it is. It's a, it's a slogan, and it's at the end of commercials for Adidas. Adidas has been using all in. I'm, did, you, did you get a copyright for that? Are you getting any royalties? I stopped him there, and I said, I'll tell you what all in means to me. I began to tell him about a young woman who was sitting in the doctor's office. Most of the time, we have to be at the doctor's. We really don't want to be there, but she's excited to be at the doctor's. And as her name is called, she pretty much runs past the nurse into the examination room, sits up on the table and lays back. She's so excited to be at the doctor's because, because she's going to get to see her child again. She's pregnant. And as she sees the images flicker on the screen and she hears the heartbeat, it, it's emotional, it's beautiful. The nurse, the doctor are there, everything is great, except the doctor walks out of the room and the nurse follows. She doesn't mind because they printed out pictures, she's excited to show her mother. Except the nurse comes back in the room with a small card in her hand, hands it to the woman on the table and walks out. Now the woman's curious, so she opens the card and begins to read. And it says, we're sorry to inform you, but you've contracted the measles. 
Nothing's wrong with getting the measles. You get some small bumps on your body, a fever, a flu, a couple of weeks, it's gone. But if you get the measles while you're pregnant, we believe it will have very dangerous effects on the child inside. Also on the card it said we don't see certain limbs of the body developing properly. We don't see a properly developed arm or leg. And on the bottom of the card it simply said it's in our opinion that you consider termination of this pregnancy. You try again later with your husband for another child. As you can imagine, the woman is crushed. She went to be absolutely ecstatic to completely distraught in a matter of moments. The nurse walks back in the room and said, Miss, I know this is very difficult, but what would you choose to do? The woman sits up off the table and she says, Thank you for your opinion. Thank you for your advice, truly. But I choose to be committed to this child, whether he lives for two more weeks or he lives for 20 years. I choose to stick with him, whether he has one arm or no arms, one leg or no legs. That is my choice. See, guys, I'm so thankful for that woman because, see, that woman is my mother. And I was a child inside of her in the doctors that day. You see, that's what all in means to me. It's not a t-shirt. It's not a wristband. It's not a slogan at the end of a commercial. See, what all in means to me is when you, when you keep going when other people tell you to quit. And when you don't stop when other people tell you you are wasting your time. There's a lot of people that told my mother I was just going to be a waste of her time. I am so glad she didn't listen. See, the fact of the matter is all in is personal. Some people just take it as a way to score a couple of extra goals and win a championship, and that's great. For some people, it's just uh, increasing the profit margin by 10% in the first quarter, and that's happened for some companies. And that's great, too. But for me, the greatest thing is when people make it a lifestyle. When it's not just another event. Because we go from event to event to event, and yet we feel more empty inside than ever. See, when I talked to the Giants that night, people think I talked about football. I never talked about football. I walked in the room and I asked them one question towards the end of our talk. I said, what does it mean to be committed? Some guys said this and some guys said that. So I said, you know what, guys? Let's use an analogy. Maybe you can understand. You're playing the game of poker. If you take all your chips and you push them in the middle of the table, what does that mean? A player on the team at the time named Justin Tuck was there. And I remember he smiled. He was sitting in the back room. He said, well, if you push all your chips in the middle of the table, it means you're all in. You're ready to win. You're done going halfway. I said, okay. But what would happen if everyone shows their cards, but then you pull your chips back and you tell everyone you were just kidding? I remember he smiled even wider and said, well, if you're playing poker at my house, that's how you get punched in the face. <laughs> I said, Justin, you're right. So if we would never do it in a game of poker, why do we do it with our lives? Why do we say we're going to be committed to something when things get tough, when un the unexpected happens, we back away and say, it's not for me. So I gave him a chip that night. And I gave him a marker. And I said, guys, there's nothing special about this chip. In fact, it's, it's from Walmart. <laughs> but take this chip, and if you mean business, you take this marker and you sign it. You put it someplace, you're going to see it every single day. And when you see it, you ask yourself the question, am I really giving my best, or am I just going halfway? Some guys took the chip and they put it in their locker and they said they, they would see it before they hit the field. They said it helped them play better, I guess. Other guys took it a little more personally, and they said they took that chip, and they were all in for the game of football, but they said they wanted to be more committed at home, so they put it in the middle of their kitchen table to be a more committed husband and father. One of the guys in the video, even Antrell, he played for the Chicago Bears last year. I remember he sent me the Twitter picture. He got the words all in tattooed on his chest. I said, Antrell, no one said to do that. <laughs> but he actually sent me one of the best replies I ever received. He said, for me, John Paul, if, uh, if all in is just about, well, if it was just about a t-shirt, well, I can put a t-shirt on and take it off whenever it looks good. But if I'm really committed, I'm committed even when things don't look good, when they look ugly, when they look difficult. I want to be reminded of that every time I look in the mirror, what commitment truly is. It's not something I can take off and put in the trash. See, that's what it's all about. 
It's about being committed inside of here. Not when the lights are on. Not when the crowd is cheering. But what do we do when no one's watching? That's a lifestyle. That's not an event. See, the one question you might have in your mind is, John Paul, all that's great, but I still have one question. Why did the Giants call you up in the first place? They wanted a better motivational speaker. Tony Robbins has, a, has an office in New York. They wanted a better ninth grade teacher. I'm sure they could have found one. You're right, and you're right. Giants called me up because I went to jail. No, let's correct that. I was not personally in jail, okay? Saw some faces, but... See, when I came back from playing basketball in the NBA Summer League, I wanted to be personal. I wanted to make a difference in people's lives, and, well, I wanted to be a teacher. But I didn't know you need this thing called the teacher certificate. My college failed to tell me that, so I had to go back to college and get one, and as I was getting my teacher certificate, I went to the only place that would open their doors so I could help kids. Juvenile jails. I went to juvenile jails throughout my state, and I started tutoring. And after tutoring, then, they found out I was a basketball player, so they asked if I would coach their basketball program. I said, sure, and they said, oh, this is great. It'll be like the movie The Gridiron Gang, and you kind of look like The Rock, so this is perfect. And I said, I'll give it a try. And they said, well, we're going to buy jerseys for the kids. Um, what do you want on the jerseys? These kids have, you know, these kids have made some, are pretty bad, and they've made their, their, their mistakes, and you got to have a tough name. I said, first of all, I don't believe you're a mistake. You can make a mistake, but you're not born a mistake. And I said, if you let me coach the team, I only want two words on our jerseys. And these are the jerseys that, that we wear in jail to this day. And this is the word on the front. See, I believe this is the best thing you can play for and live for. There's a movie I enjoy a lot. You may have seen it. It's called The Shawshank Redemption. There's a quote at the end of that movie that says, hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and a good thing never dies. It's true. See, the greatest thing is when you give somebody hope because they see you live a life of commitment and that you're all in. This is our reverse side and we have to change colors. When you give somebody hope, they believe they can have this. A future. You don't personally have to go to juvenile jails and wear these jerseys and play with us on, on Wednesdays. I personally believe we all have the opportunity to wear this type of jersey every single day. See, when we walk into our homes, do we give hope or do we take it away because the power of the tongue has the ability to do both? Do we give others on our team, in our school, the ability that they can be greater than us, a future? Or do we dash that too? See, like I said before I hung up the phone, I asked the Giants, why did you call me? And they said, well, you wouldn't believe it, but we didn't hear about you from YouTube and we didn't hear about you because you're a teacher. We heard about you because you went and you worked with kids in jail and we thought it'd be great for the guys to know about that. See, I didn't get to talk to Elon Manning and Victor Cruz because I sent in my resume 20 times. I guess I got to do it because I decided I wanted to be all in for the least of these. And then I got to do it for the greatest. If you question what should I be all in for, don't start at the top. Everybody wants to get to the top. Start at the bottom. Be committed to the ones no one wants to be committed for. And pretty soon, I think you'll be up here telling your story. God bless you guys. Thank you for your time. <laughs>